willkommen zurück aus der Mittagspause. Ich hoffe, soweit alle haben gut gegessen, äh, ihren Lunch gehabt, äh, Kaffee getrunken und äh, ich wollte noch vielleicht so zwei, drei Sachen sagen, bevor wir jetzt auf die Keynote mit äh, Larry Kim gehen. Ähm, ich habe nur gemerkt, als, wir, als ich auch selber Mittagessen war, wie großartig das ist auf solchen Konferenzen, ähm, weil ähm, ja wirklich tolle Onliner hier da sind, äh, international, national und äh, auch immer diese Chance nützen, auch mal nicht nur äh, vielleicht bei der Session eine Frage zu stellen, sondern ich glaube, dass alle hier auch gerne bereit sind, auch so äh, neben den Sessions die Fragen zu beantworten. Und ähm, da freue ich mich. Das Einzige, was ich festgestellt habe, ich war kurz bei der, in der Referenten-Lounge, habe da Mittag gegessen und da saßen hier die SEO-Leute und da saßen die AdWords-Leute zusammen und da saßen die Datenleute zusammen. Ne? Und äh, dachte mir, das könnte sich auch ein bisschen schöner mischen, ähm, aber ansonsten. Ähm, und noch vielleicht eine letzte Bemerkung. Ich habe immer das Gefühl, dass immer die gleichen auf der SMX sind, aber die sitzen alle bei mir immer in der ersten Reihe und ich habe mich gefragt, ob ich irgendjemand aus der letzten Reihe kenne. Wer sitzt denn eigentlich da oben in der letzten Reihe? Ja, genau, hier, wunderbar, ne? genau, das, äh, aber vielleicht tauschen wir irgendwann mal, vielleicht will irgendwann die erste Reihe irgendwann mal ganz hinten sitzen, dann sehe ich, ah, guck mal, das sind auch ganz viele andere neue Leute auf der SMX. And uh, I'm going now to switch to, uh, to English and um, so I may welcome you now to our keynote uh, with Larry Kim and Larry Kim was the founder of WordStream and uh, he founded uh, now a company mobile monkey and so uh, they're doing something around chatbots however this will not be the topic um, and so the topic will be around uh, unicorn marketing and uh, I was just uh, having a look on uh, Larry's um, a profile on LinkedIn and I think really he loves unicorns and uh, but I think the idea is now to give real deep insights in maybe not always conventional ways uh, to do online marketing and um, so I'm very happy to have uh, Larry Kim the second time over here on SMX it was a fantastic presentation last year do write a lot of information down because he, I, I think he tells very far or he's very fast uh, presenter but um, you get uh, the presentation so everything will be perfect and I say welcome now Larry Kim Hi, good afternoon. Thanks for having me. It's so great to be here. Uh, thank you, organizers. Uh, I hope your English is better than my German. Uh, that's a joke. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, we got an exciting uh, presentation for you today. It's uh, Unicorn Marketing, how to, ex how to achieve spectacularly great results across different uh, marketing channels. Uh, on the agenda today, uh, we'll be talking about, mostly talking about unicorns, starting with my theory of unicorn marketing. Uh, we'll be talking about kind of a discussion on the differences between donkeys and unicorns, uh, followed by a discussion of the latest and greatest technologies in unicorn and donkey detection. Uh, we'll also introduce some new important marketing concepts, specifically the unicorn alert and creating unicorn babies. Uh, and just in case you thought you were in the wrong conference, uh, don't worry, you are in the right place. We will be talking about growth marketing hacks, uh, my favorite growth marketing hacks for 2018 and beyond. Uh, before getting into all the details of this presentation and the hacks, I wanted to just briefly introduce myself. Um, my name is Larry Kim. I'm slightly obsessed with unicorns. Uh, I'm from <laughs> Cambridge, Massachusetts. Um, it's, uh, and I live in a neighborhood called Harvard Square. It's a very famous neighborhood. Uh, it's where Facebook was founded. It's also where Microsoft was founded. Uh, it's also where I started WordStream back in 2008. I originally started out as a sole proprietor, like a, just a solo internet marketing uh, consultant person, starting out of, a, a, out of a bakery called Panera Bread because of the free uh, Wi-Fi and unlimited Diet Coke refills. Um, the company's gotten a lot bigger in the last decade. It, it employs over 350 people. Uh, in Boston and managing approximately a billion dollars in ad spends for tens of thousands of, of companies. So it's the world's largest PPC software company. Uh, and last year, I, I left the company to start a new uh, chatbot uh, company for, for Facebook. And if you've never heard of chatbots before, it's, it's kind of like an alternative uh, text-based or messaging-based interface to the inter internet. So instead of using a, a web browser or mobile, mobile web browser, uh, you could use something like this, uh, where you, um, you know, this is an example of a, a, of an, a 
of a, of a form, so just conversationally you know, taking orders uh, through chat as opposed to through a website. Uh, and the product that I'm building is a, um, it's a chatbot building tool, so just the ability to create these chatbots without having to write software. The last thing I'll just say about myself uh, is that um, I have a three-year-old kid, uh, married, and I have uh, oh, another kid on the way in, in two months. So, uh, it, <laughs> thanks. Uh, <laughs> um, so enough about me, back to our story. We're talking about unicorn marketing, and I wanted to start with my crazy unicorn theory of marketing. And basically the bad news is that 98% of, of your marketing efforts are going nowhere. Uh, and that's not a criticism, it's actually happening to me too. Uh, so when I think about my content marketing efforts over the last year, uh, I, I produced about 300 different content campaigns, about eight of them did spectacularly well, and about 292 went nowhere. Uh, so I worked really hard on every single one of those campaigns. 97% uh, are donkeys, 2.5% are unicorns. Why the heck are they doing so poorly? Uh, and so a lot of times, <laughs> a lot of times when I, sh uh, I ask my friends about this, um, they give me all sorts of d dumb answers. Like they say, oh, Larry, you need to just, you know, don't, pr don't produce so much content and just focus on the quality. And I find that to be a very unsatisfying answer because uh, it's just so uh, ambiguous, right? Because what exactly is quality content? Uh, you know, different people, they make different arguments, uh, like it should be long form content or it should be short form content or that it should have, you know, 10 images as if there's like a checklist of 12 things that you need to do in order to be considered, uh, you know, quality content. Uh, and and um, uh, my problem with these, these definitions and these checkbox approaches uh, is that all of my content kind of checked the boxes on those 12 things, yet still 98% of them went nowhere. Uh, and so I think there's something something happening here that's a little bit more uh, profound. It's not just, uh, you know, these platitudes like quality. I think what's actually happening is, is that uh, Google and Facebook algorithms are dramatically changing in the last, you know, 24 to 18 months. Uh, basically, they're really, really dramatically rewarding the unicorns and are dramatically punishing uh, the, the, the donkeys in, in terms of their uh, exposure, because if you don't get exposure on Facebook and Google, you know, these content campaigns are doomed. Um, so let me just show you some evidence of this. Um, so I'm the, uh, I'm, an, uh, I'm a contributor to Inc. Magazine, and every month my editor sends out the information about what, what were the top 10 posts of the month. So the green line there shows the top 10 posts of the month in, in 2015, uh, of, of August 2015, uh, and what you can see is the top 10 posts had a very equal distribution. So the number one story kind of got the same amount of traffic as the number two, the same as the number three, etc. Uh, and then what happened in, in 2016 of August, it became a little bit more exponential. And then if you look at uh, tw 2017 last year, the top two stories got more traffic than all the rest of the articles on the site combined. Uh, so I, I think that, that's an interesting piece of evidence. Um, it's not just about the, sh the, 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 the traffic, it's, uh, it's also about the shares. Uh, so uh, again, uh, this is the, the most shared articles for Inc. Magazine. The gray line at the bottom shows 2015. It was kind of like communism. It was everyone was getting the same amount of shares, more or less. Uh, and then in 2016, something crazy happened, and they started really, really distributing it uh, in an une unequal way. The top two stories getting all the, uh, all the traff, all the shares. Uh, and, and, then, and then in 2017, they kind of backed off. Uh, it's, it's not as crazy, but I think that has more to do with just less exposure in the news feed. Uh, you know, there's a lot more ads in 2017 than there was in 2016. And so my, my point still is that it's, it's becoming more and more unequal and I think what we need to, to do here is have a, a, a new strategy. I'm calling it unicorn marketing, uh, which is kind of a strategic realignment of our conventional notions of quality to align them with the algorithmic uh, definitions of quality that are being used by uh, Google and Facebook algorithms. And so if you're with me so far, I'd like to bring us into part two, uh, which is a discussion of the differences between donkeys and unicorns. So I've been kind of been uh, introducing these concepts, using them, uh, but I, I think we should try to formalize the definitions of what exactly is a donkey and what is a unicorn. Uh, so the difference between a donkey and a unicorn is both cross-channel and relative. Uh, so what do I mean by cross-channel and relative? So in terms of relative, what I mean by this is that it's not like 
there's like a certain number of page views where your, your content becomes a donkey or a unicorn. Uh, it's, it's more about the distribution of your content and your, your campaigns. So this, is, this graph shows 129 status updates for a Facebook company page. Most of the status updates have, are donkeys. They have engagement rates of between 0 and 1%, 1 to 2%, 2 to 3%, et etc. They're all kind of clustered there uh, around 2% engagement rates. But on the very other side, you've got three outliers, three outliers that have engagement rates of 10 or more percent. Uh, so the difference between a donkey and a unicorn is we're looking for the outliers. We're looking for the campaigns, the, the status updates, you know, the, the, uh, the, the SEO campaigns, the blog posts that are doing three, four, or five times better than the average. Okay? And, and the, the interesting thing about this is that uh, this is not just a Facebook phenomenon. Uh, we see this across all of the different marketing channels. So in blogging, uh, it's, it's generally the case that a small number of your articles, maybe 10% of them, will generate roughly you know, 50, 60, 70% of the traffic. Um, and so I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page here. Uh, sometimes when I talk about donkeys and unicorns, people think I'm encouraging them to go after viral hits, like Gangnam Style. And I'm absolutely not saying that you should try to go after viral hits like Gangnam Style, because those are just like, it's like a one in a million chance to, to do that. Do you see what I'm saying? Like it's, that's a video that got two billion views, and the chances of you getting the next one is, is, is almost impossible. What I'm saying is that you should focus on your unicorns, which I'm defining as your top three 3% of your content, no matter how crappy your content is or your, your, your marketing is, there's going to be 3% of it that's going to do a little less crappy than the rest of it. Do you see what I'm saying? <laughs> so the good news is no, ma no matter who you are, you have unicorns. You just have to find them. Uh, and so when it comes to finding the unicorns amongst the donkeys, uh, one of the, the key differentiating, uh, discriminating factors has to do with the click-through rates. Okay, so let's just let's think about this here for a second. So, across all of the channels, like let's take paid advertising for example, AdWords. Uh, it's always been about the engagement rates. The quality score has always been just a normalized version of click-through rates. And if you get a very very high click-through rate, you'll get a very high quality score, and you'll get a very low cost per click discount. Conversely, if you have crappy click-through rates, you get these 400% cost per click penalties. Uh, Twitter and Facebook ads just copied this idea, calling it you know, relevancy score and, and, and quality adjusted bid, et cetera. But basically, it's the same idea. If you're promoting a social content uh, that has a 1% click-through rate, uh, you're going to pay $3, 4 $5 a click. And if you can get that click-through rate up to 3 5 7 15 20 percent, uh, those, those cost per clicks will fall to, to less than one penny. Uh, it's not just about social and, 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 and AdWords. It's also about organic, so, uh, or organic uh, social. So like uh, we know, or, or organic search, Google search. Uh, we know that click-through rates dramatically impact the rankings, organic rankings. Um, I know this because I've done my own experiments on this topic. Uh, and, and what I've, I was tracking like a thousand keyword and, 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 and pages over a few, uh, over a year. And what I saw was that Google was just reordering the results, kind of pushing up the, the, the listings that had above average click-through rates. Uh, uh, meanwhile, the, the listings that had lower than average, lower than expected click-through rates were kind of falling to the bottom of the page. Um, and of course, this impacts organic social as well in a big way because every time somebody, uh, Facebook additions a piece of content to you in the news feed, what they're really doing is they're training the, the news feed. Uh, if you engage with this uh, content, you're more likely to see that type of content in the future. If not, uh, you will not see this. You're less likely to see it. And so, of course, the engagement matters uh, tremendously. Um, it even matters for things like email marketing. So like email marketing, obviously click-through rate is a big deal because if they don't open the email, they don't see your, your content. But more recently in the last 24 months, uh, these new spam filters, machine learning based spam filters like the promotions box, uh, the Google, the uh, Microsoft Outlook clutter box, uh, these are all new filters that, that filter out even the stuff that you've opted into. Okay, so, and the way that they, they determine what to, to remove, it's based on whether or not you open this stuff. Uh, and so, the last, the last thing that I'll point out is that uh, it's, it's great that these high click-through rate campaigns are generating all this traffic, but they also have a profound impact on conversion rates. So uh, when I re do regressions on like e-commerce companies looking at the different products, 
uh, and, and looking at like, what are the different click-through rates of, of the different products in this catalog, uh, and then correlating that to their respective conversion rates, we see a pretty strong correlation between click-through rates and conversion rates. Basically, in a nutshell, if you can get people really excited about clicking on your listing, whether it be a Facebook ad, a, an SEO listing, an email, that excitement will carry through to a lead, sign up, or a purchase. Um, so, so basically, when it comes to uh, the outliers, the unicorns, the top 3% of your campaign, the thing that they have in common isn't like the number of images. It's not the number of words. It has everything to do with um, the, the engagement rates of these campaigns. The, the, the campaigns that have unusually high click-through rates will do well in all of the channels. Why? It's because all of these algorithms, the, all these platforms are governed by algorithms that are essentially the same um, ver versions of the same thing. They kind of identify high quality content based on click-through rate and dramatically reward these, these content campaigns with more and more visibility at lower, lower cost. Um, so if you're still with me, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the latest and greatest in donkey and unicorn detection. Okay? So, the problem here is that nine out of 10 marketers suffer from a terrible illness called donkey denial syndrome. Uh, it's, it's, it's very terrible. Basically what it means uh, is that we, we think that everything that we work on is a unicorn uh, and, and no, nothing is a donkey. Uh, you know, when in reality, uh, a lot of times we think that it's a unicorn, but in, when in actuality, uh, it could have been a mosquito or a rhinoceros or a triceratops or some other creature that we thought was a unicorn but was actually something else. And so what is needed, I think, is a more objective way to discern the differences between donkeys and unicorns, right? Uh, and to do this, I have created a very easy to use donkey detector. It's, it's handheld, and basically how it works is it finds content or, or campaigns in general that has unusually high click-through rates. And basically, it's just a pyramid scheme. Don't worry, this pyramid scheme is totally legal. It's, you will not go to jail for using it. Uh, and, and basically, uh, the, the idea is as follows. It's a workflow. Uh, step one, you're going to have to create a lot of different content campaigns. So like, if you think about your social campaigns or your email campaigns or your blog campaigns, you know, one th step one, we're going to have to up the volume to take more shots. It's a little like poker. If you want to have great hands, you have to see a lot of hands in order to, to, to make those those killer hands. Um, uh, step two, what we're going to do is measure the engagement rates for these campaigns. Okay? Step three is very, very important. Um, you need to kill the donkeys, uh, metaphorically. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, basically, the biggest mistake that marketers are making right now is they just they just are too in love with their, with their donkeys. You see what I'm saying? So, so like, you know, maybe you have an email campaign and you blast it out to 10,000 names and it has like a 5% open rate and your boss thinks like, well, maybe if we send it to 100,000 more emails, it'll, like, it'll do better. And I'm like, really? <laughs> it didn't do well on the first 5,000 and you think sending it out to another 10,000 will, will make a difference? No, no it, 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 it never makes a difference. A donkey is a donkey is a donkey. Uh, it's not gonna get through the spam filters. Um, let it go, stop spending your time and energy on this uh, kind of suicide mission. Instead, what you need to do is find those unicorns and sound the unicorn alert, okay? So, uh, so this is a very important concept, but just kind of as a reminder, what is a good in engagement rate uh, threshold to, to sound this unicorn alert? Remember that the difference between the high engagement unicorns and the low engagement donkeys, uh, it, was, it was a relative differentiation. So, the pyramid scheme just says, let's, let's execute a lot of campaigns. Let's then kind of compare the open rates for the, for the emails or the click-through rates for the, for the, um, uh, for the uh, ads or social, social campaigns or, or, or look at the, the traffic being driven to the different blog posts and just stack rank them by engagement and, and kind of focus more on, on the ones that are the outliers, the two, three, four, five times better than average. Uh, same thing with conversion rate optimization. It's generally the case that the average conversion rate on the internet is around 2.15%, but the top 10% of offers can, can, can convert at 
above 10%. And so, what, you know, it's crazy. Some com companies have like hundreds of different offers on their site. What you need to do is just find one unicorn and then shut down all the other offers. Uh, and so the unicorn power law of marketing just says, like it's always been the case that most of the value comes from a small amount of campaigns, but virality is becoming more viral. So an increasing number, uh, like an increasing per percentage, like 85% of the value is coming from just 5% uh, of the campaigns. And so this is why I'm saying just focus on the unicorns because the top 3% of your campaigns, uh, that's, those are the ones that are going to do best in, in search, in social, in advertising, and will convert better than anything else you've got. So we're now at part four here. I want to talk a little bit about the unicorn alert and making unicorn babies. Don't worry if you've never heard about these concepts. I just made them up. Uh, but uh, uh, remember how earlier today I was saying that um, eight of my campaigns did really, really well and were unicorns, and 292 of them were donkeys that went nowhere. Well, this was one of my unicorns. It was five big ch changes coming to AdWords, everything you need to know. Uh, and this was, this was an incredible campaign because I just wrote this blog post in like 20 minutes, okay? It wasn't even a great post, but somehow there was something so catchy about this piece of content uh, that it was getting tens of thousands of shares on social media. It was, you know, my typical story might get, you know, one, maybe 200 uh, shares on social media, but this one got tens of thousands. Uh, and, and my typical story might get 500 to 1,000 page views. This was getting 100,000 page views. So there's something very unusually catchy about this topic. And so the biggest mistake that marketers do is when they catch one of these lucky breaks is they just celebrate. Uh, they say, congratulations, everyone. We did it. Uh, you know, let's look at the content calendar, see what we need to do for next week. Uh, it's March, so maybe we should do something about, I don't know, St. Patrick's Day or, 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 or basketball or some other, you know, calendar-themed uh, piece of content. And, and that's exactly the wrong thing to be doing. What you need to do instead is uh, jumping, you, you, need to, you need to stop what you're doing, like forget about what's on the calendar, you have to get off of the content treadmill uh, and instead sound the unicorn alert and make unicorn babies, okay? So let me give you an example of sounding the unicorn alert and making unicorn babies. So unicorn baby example number one. I have a unicorn, this, this, you know, this blog post that I spent 20 minutes on and it's getting 100,000 views, so it's a hot topic. I should just clone the article. I should just make a, a version of this story and put it into Search Engine Journal. Why? Because it's doing so well on my own blog, that means this t the same topic is going to do well in a, as a contributed article elsewhere. And of course, you can see here, uh, it got 2,300 shares, which is about 23 times higher than their average, uh, and it got around 12,100 reads, which is about 26 times higher than their average story. Um, Another example of a unicorn baby is, is to further explore the topic in greater depth. Okay, so my original story was about five new features in AdWords, everything you need to know. It's a hot topic, so why don't I do a follow-up story on each of the different features? So this one was about something about Google Map ads, and here, here was another one about um, you know, the expanded text ads. Each one of these follow-up stories generated the same amount of interest, like 100,000 views each, okay? So uh, because you're basically in the same vicinity of, of the original hot topic, uh, you're just exploring it in greater detail. One of the really interesting findings, one of the interesting um, takeaways from this finding is that you actually don't have to spend a lot of effort uh, in your inaugural article. Okay, so like, remember that, that original piece that I put together, it was just like a, a list of five features, you know? Um, so, so I think what I'm advocating here is for minimal viable content. Like what you need to do is just try out different ideas in a lightweight way, and if it's responding, like uh, you can always backfill the details later and increase the quote unquote, you know, quality and, and comprehensiveness of the story once you have evidence to believe uh, that this is an interesting topic. Um, another way of, of, of creating a unicorn baby is unicorn uh, is, is infographification and videofication of unicorns. Uh, so I love doing inf infographics and videos. Uh, the problem is it takes like it takes forever uh, and it costs like thousands of dollars to do these things. And so I re get really annoyed or bummed when I, I spend all this time and effort on videos and infographics to go nowhere. Uh, so the way that I de-risk this operation. 
uh, is to only create videos and infographics on topics that have proven themselves to be unicorns in, in a previous uh, format, because if it did well in one format, it's going to do well in another format. Uh, so this is an example of this. I had the number two article on search engine land. Uh, it, was a, it was a guide to increasing your organic click-through rates on Google, and I knew that it was going to be a top, you know, top three article. Why? Because it was just an infographic version of one of my top stories for the month. So I, I just... I just thought, you know, if it it's, did well in one format, let's just turn it into a graphic. Um, you know, it, it's not just about SEO and, 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 and Facebook, even things like your webinars and events and conference presentations. Uh, when we found that unicorn, I told my conference team, my, my webinar team, like, we need to stop what we're doing. I know we have some webinars on the calendar, let's cancel them and just create a webinar today uh, using the exact same title, right? Because that way we can get registrations. The problem with blog post views is you don't know who, who, who those people are. Uh, and so basically, uh, we, we just created this registration page like you know, within a few hours, we sent out the email blast, uh, and of course we got 5,000 registrations for this thing. So our average number of registrations is around 600, and here we got 5,000. Why 5,000? Because GoToWebinar Go to has a limit of 5,000. Uh, so so we, we broke GoToWebinar. Uh, but again, the mistake that marketers do is they, they, they say, congratulations, we've got 5,000 uh, attendees, let's move on to the next topic. So what I told my team was, I said, guys, just you know, forget about like, doing the next topic. I just want to do the same topic again. They thought I was insane. I was like, no, no, I, I'm not insane. I, I want to do the same topic again. You can, you can exclude the people who attended, but like, this is a hot topic, and we got limited by, by uh, go, go to webinar. <laughs> there could be another 10,000 people here uh, who, who might want to join this thing. So, so we, just, we did the exact same story again the next day and got another 5,000 registrations, okay? We didn't even make one change. It's like, Larry, don't you want to make a change? I'm like, no. Like, why would I do that? Like, I, it's, it's working. Uh, the, so, so, so what we ended up doing is we ended up creating this, this running this webinar five times. Uh, twice we did it identically. Then I made a few slight changes, like talking about those additional features. Uh, that's, a, that's just basically a, a unicorn baby of the original unicorn. And we just milked this thing to death, you know, five times until, until um, it started, the performance started to appear more like a, a usual webinar, in which, in which case, that's kind of my signal to, to know that we've, we've, kind of, we've kind of milked this thing to death. Um, the, the most important uh, thing that you need to do, guys, is uh, when, you, when you hit these unicorns, you have to get the maximum leverage, uh, and, and one of the ways to extract the leverage is through paid social advertising on, on like Facebook and Twitter. So we know that uh, Facebook ads are, uh, you know, extremely cheap if you have high click-through rates, uh, you know, one penny, uh, you know, if, if, for, for those, those clicks when I promote it, six pennies when I promote on Twitter, and these are remarkable deals, bargains, like sales, uh, compared to the five or four or five dollars a click that they usually charge. There's an old game called Battleship. I don't know if you guys are old enough to remember this, but it's basically the, the goal is to, to blow up the other guy's battleship, and for some reason you don't have like drones or, or radar or guided missiles or, or anything. You have no freaking clue uh, where that ship is, and so you just have to lob a lot of shots, wait for the impact, and when you hear an impact, you then focus all your firepower and attention in that vicinity because you know uh, that there, there's a battleship there. Uh, and, and so that's sort of the analogy or metaphor for this unicorn marketing. Uh, it has to do with, it, it's a bit of a more of a numbers game. Um, people get a little uncomfortable with that because it's kind of admitting that they don't have full control over what's going to do well and what won't do well. So just being open to more experimentation. Uh, and and, I, and I, I find that that's sort of the key as opposed to sort of, you know, the guru telling us, you know, this is going to be the article that goes hot. You know, my, I consider myself a pretty capable marketer, but yet my, uh, my success rate is only about 3%. Um, so, so guys, it's, it's more about getting more from the winners and dropping the losers quickly. So, Hopefully, I've convinced you by now that engagement rates on marketing campaigns matter a tremendous amount. And so I wanted to just end the presentation today by highlighting a few of my favorite uh, hacks for, for doubling or tripling engagement rates.
okay? Uh, so starting with the Russian ad targeting method. Uh, so this was a really interesting experiment that I did last year in November. Um, I created a fake website called Citizens News Network. Uh, it is a completely fake, fake news site. This is like the, the logo up there, it's a backwards CNN logo. Uh, I, it took me five minutes. I just signed up for WordPress uh, and I, I copied and pasted a, a couple fake articles onto the site uh, just, just, just as an experiment. I wasn't trying to deceive people. I just wanted to see what was going to happen. I spent $50 promoting uh, this article about Donald Trump and, 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 and paid supporters. I, I, um, I promoted it to swing states, uh, you know, to, to conservative voters, and then hit the promote button. And, and what happened next was shocking. <laughs> Uh, thousands of people were clicking on this thing and commenting on this thing and resharing this thing within minutes. Okay, so people were eating this stuff up. Uh, we generated so much engagement, like nothing, like off the charts, uh, with a $53 in, in, in ad spend. So what the Russians have basically figured out here is that um, they're exploiting this notion of. Uh, cognitive dissonance. Uh, so it's, it's just a, it's a bias. Like it, uh, people are very much predisposed to engage with and share and comment on content that sort of validates their pre existing worldviews. So uh, as a consequence of this, like I'm not suggesting you create fake news for your site, but what I am saying is that um, the key here is to come up with content and, and campaigns that. Uh, th that are along the lines of what people were thinking. This is an example uh, of, of a really spectacular technology story last year that went hugely viral. And, and the reason is because everyone already thought that this was the case, uh, but, but Apple was constantly denying this. Uh, and and, and we, when we find out that they were actually slowing down the, 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 the batteries right before the upgrades, uh, you know, they, it was like, I knew it, right? Everyone knew it. Um, my number four uh, crazy Facebook advertising hack for doubling or tripling uh, click-through rates is the inverted unicorn ad targeting method. So the ad inverted unicorn method, uh, this, is, this is pretty crazy stuff. So in, ge in, gen in generic, uh, generally speaking in, ad in, in Facebook ads, the, the way that you target your ads is by casting a very narrow net and then maximizing the engagement rates within that narrow specific net. So for example, you might go after people who have certain behaviors, certain interests, certain demographics, and then, and then, uh, then remarket to those people. Uh, so as an example of this using a Venn diagram, say you're s selling email marketing products, uh, we might decide to go after p uh, people who like email marketing but also have uh, marketing job titles. So th this makes a lot of sense. Um, you're, you're, you're kind of narrowing the circle, making it as, as targeted as possible and trying to maximize the engagement rates. The inverted unicorn is the opposite. It says, let's just do the complete opposite. Let's go after two completely different interests, uh, like people who like email marketing and people who like Game of Thrones. Okay, so people who like the Daenerys Targaryen fan page, etc. So what does Game of Thrones have to do with email marketing? Absolutely nothing. They're, 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 they're completely uncorrelated interests that have nothing to do with each other. But this is an extremely effective ad targeting method because it allows you to create cre creative experiences that appeals to not just one of the user's interests, but two or three or four of their interests simultaneously. Uh, and so, especially if you're in an industry where you have an extremely boring product that has like a one or two percent click-through rates, you, you know you're never going to win on Facebook with, with those types of click-through rates. Uh, the inverted unicorn is a really interesting way to make really boring things more interesting by, by tapping into a, to uncorrelated uh, uh, interests. And there's no other way of doing this other than Facebook. I, I tested this out on a lot of different accounts. And what we found was it would double or triple the, the click-through rates. We would get remarkably low uh, cost per cl clicks and, and CPMs, uh, substantially lower than, than the average. My number three Facebook, my number three crazy hack for you guys to think about in 2018 is a Facebook, uh, Facebook Messenger hack. So this hack has to do with this idea that um, so in the olden days of marketing, we were trying to collect emails so that we could market to them. But now, like the engagement rate, the open rate is like five percent. Uh, and then, and then more recently, like you know, ten years ago, we were trying to get these people to like our pages. Um, 
so that we would show up in their, their news feed, right? And now that the engagement is like zero to 1%. Uh, so, so, so the new way of doing this uh, is, is, is Facebook Messenger, where, where you can get you know, a 70 or 80% open rate within the first, uh, you know, first hour. Uh, and so uh, like just as an example, I, I spammed Neil Patel yesterday with my, my uh, mobile monkey chat blaster. Uh, and, and, and it was just a link to a blog post. And Neil Patel read it, I can see, because his, his face is down there. Uh, so, so, I, so I got uh, and so, so basically, um, uh, the, if, if you're not familiar with Facebook Messenger marketing, uh, the, the way that works is that you're, you're allowed to message anybody who messages you. Uh, so by, if, if the user initiates a conversation with your business, you're allowed to message them back. Uh, and so one of the interesting things about this model is that uh, Everybody uh, who messages you, regardless of whether or not they, they provide their, their name and, and, and photo and, and, um, lo and language and location, like you get all this information from the platform, like regardless of whether or not they, they manually entered it in or not. Okay, so then you can use these permissions to then blast them back, like s send them back messages uh, with, with these like ridiculously high open rates uh, that are like 70 or 80 times more valuable than just regular emails. And so, the game in Facebook me Messenger marketing is to get a big Facebook Messenger contact list. And so there's a lot of cool ways that you can grow your contact lists. Uh, one of them is, is this, this uh, website plugin where you install chat on your website. Uh, so, so this is kind of like a robotic chat where you know, it answers questions like your hours or, or, or whatever you want it to do. But anyone who engages with this, you get to message them back on Facebook Messenger. This is a checkbox plugin. Uh, so you just append it to the bottom of, of the forms that are already on your site. And then if they want to, they can opt into getting uh, messages from you from Messenger. And you'll, you'll just be building up this big, massive list. A final uh, really cool way of doing this is using send to messenger ads in Facebook. So if you're buying click campaigns, I think that's a terrible deal right now because you're probably paying 2 or $3 for those clicks, and they're probably converting around 2 or 3%. So you're probably spending hundreds or if not thousands of dollars per sale. Uh, these sent to messenger campaigns, you get 100% conversion rate because everybody who messages you, you get their information and the permissions to message them back. All right, so I think that's very interesting. My number two hack for you guys to think about uh, has to do with a unicorn slush fund. So this is a budgeting concept. The old, in the olden days, we had this concept of a monthly PPC budget where it was like $1,000 a month. And like, just as an example, and say you had 10 pieces of content that you wanted to promote. So the old way was to just evenly divide the budget, you know, $100 per post or something like that. And that was ridiculous because we know that 97% of these things go nowhere. So you're just promoting a bunch of donkeys that are going, going nowhere. Instead, what you need is a unicorn slush fund. A unicorn slush fund just says that you can uh, roll over the, the budgets and, and, and not, uh, not have to, it was, it's not use it or lose it. Uh, and so, you know, say, say it's January, we, we, we have no unicorns, February, no unicorns, March, no unicorns, but we hit one in April. Well, then what you want to do is deploy all of the, of the crude budget for the entire year on that one campaign. And by doing so, you'll actually generate you know, 40, 50 times more return on investment from, from these campaigns than had you spent it on the donkeys. Guys, I wanted to share one last crazy hack. Uh, this is actually the most powerful hack of today. If you thought the other hacks were powerful, uh, this one will blow you away. Uh, it's, the, it's a brand hack. It, it's a way for doubling or tripling the click-through rates, and it works 100% of the time. So, this has to do with some research that I did around comparing the click-through rates of new versus repeat visitors. So new visitors, i.e. people who have low brand affinity with your company, uh, versus repeat visitors, i.e. people that have higher brand affinity because they've heard of you before. What, were the, what was the difference between those two cohorts? Like, so we ran a lot of tests where we would run like RLSA campaigns, you know, targeting different audiences with the same ads, same keywords. And what we found was an astronomical dis difference. So the, the brand affinity makes or breaks your, your click-through rate. Uh, you know, the, the, the difference is, is two to 300% difference if they've heard of you, okay? And, and, and there's a multiplicative effect because higher click-through rates means lower cost per click, okay? Uh, and, and that that higher click-through rate carries through to two to three times higher conversion rates, okay? So when you multiply that through, it's an order of magnitude difference of people who have brand affinity versus people who don't have brand affinity in terms of the campaign return on investment. So the hack here 
is if you're just waiting for people to search for your stuff and show up at the last minute and convert them to the sale, you've already lost. Because as I've shown to you right now, they're gonna, they're gonna choose and click on and buy from the companies they've previously heard of, okay? So what you need to do is spend 20% of your budget and, and your resources and time on creating content outside of your niche and campaigns outside of your niche, sort of seeding people with biases so that when they do go into market for the stuff that you're selling, uh, they're gonna pick you from the list. Uh, so how do you do this? Basically what you're doing is you are looking for topics uh, and, and areas of interest amongst your target audience that are kind of more expansive, but yet common amongst your customers. The way that you can determine this is by using Google Analytics User Explorer to kind of look at people's different interests, demographics, and, and purchasing behavior. You can also get this information from Facebook Analytics, uh, which shows the same, same information. Even Twitter has this type of information where audience analytics, detailed audience analytics. Notice how, this is my own audience analytics, notice how 70% of the people who buy from me are interested in the topic of entrepreneurship. So having discerned that nugget of data, what I do is I create 20% of the content that I create on LinkedIn and on, on Inc.com, et cetera, it actually has nothing to do with chatbots and has nothing to do with pay-per-click advertising platforms. It's, it's just, you know, the ugly truth of, about being an entrepreneur. You, you might look at that and say, what the heck are you doing, Larry? Like, um, what I'm doing is I'm doing marketing. The, the whole purpose of marketing is to create and promote, you know, in, inspirational, memorable content to, and get it in front of your target market um, so that they form a bias and a preference towards you so that later when the need arises to buy whatever the heck you're, you're, you're selling, uh, they will be predisposed dramatically towards choosing you as opposed to everyone else. So that's kind of my, my top uh, growth marketing hacks for, for 2018. I just wanted to, you, you, can, you can get this in the summary. I just wanted to um, kind of wrap up the session today, kind of what does it all mean? Uh, so first of all, uh, just thank you everyone for joining me on this epic journey from donkey land to unicorn land. Uh, <laughs> you know, here are the, the steps. It's basically optimizing for engagement, you know, additioning a lot of content, finding the unicorns, eliminating the donkeys, and sounding the unicorn alert. The greatest thing about this, this strategy is that it, there's a virtuous cycle. The first time you execute a successful unicorn alert, you'll, you'll, you'll generate a ton of brand affinity, and, and, and uh, that'll then result in future higher click-through rates, which means your next uh, unicorn alert will be even more successful. So thank you so much, everyone, uh, especially Sandra and, and, and SMX uh, team for having me. Uh, it's, it's, it's quite an honor. Thank you. Super. Thanks very much. Yeah. Yeah. So, fantastic presentation. Um, shall we have one final question, Larry? Sure. Oh, one well, maybe. Huh? Okay. <laughs> um, so, in, in which time frame you're deciding whether it's a donkey or a unicorn? Oh, the, so, they, they, they reveal themselves very quickly. So, on, like, in email, you can tell within the first 200 opens. Yeah. On Facebook, you can, you can determine it within the first, like, $5 of spend. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's just... You, you, when you, the more you do this, the the fact like yeah. you can poll an election, you know, with like a thousand with a thousand peop people, you know what I mean? So so like it, it kind of gets settles very quickly. Uh, yeah. Two two or three hundred uh, impressions. Yeah. Super. Then thanks very much again, Larry Kim. <laughs> <laughs>